every one of them was crying their eyes out when they're done. I said, look where I am right now. Because I wouldn't assemble the story that my past equals my future. The past only equals your future if you live there. If you're using a rear view mirror to guide yourself, you're gonna crash. So what you've been through is horrific. What you've been through is unjust. I'm on your side. But if you hang on to it, you have no future and you have no one to blame but yourself. Winning is not about the trophy and the accolades. It's about the grind. It's about the obstacles. It's about the challenges. It's about the pain. To the 20, 20, 20 formula. First 20 minutes, as soon as you get up, five to five, 20, intense exercise. And that's gonna do a whole bunch of things. I, you know, a lot of my work is very science-based. And it's gonna create a pharmacy of mastery. So you're gonna release dopamine, which is the, the motivational neurotransmitter. Second part of the 20, 20, 20 formula, you plan. You pull out a journal, you can do a, an imprint of your day, which is very powerful, or you can look at your big five or your, your plan. That releases hope, it releases focus. Mm -hmm. And then the final part of the 2020 formula, learning. I mean, he or she who learns the most wins. What made Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs or an Elon Musk, is they know more than anyone around them. And so I believe that, you know, the more you know, the more you can achieve. With great responsibility comes great power. Right? When, when you take responsibility for something, you have great power to what? To change things, to transform things, to make things better. One of the best ways of changing your state is by moving your body, right? Because as your body moves, your brain grooves. As your body moves, your brain grooves. You create more neurogenesis, neuroplasticity. Actually, you know what supports it? Novelty, what helps you make more of these connections is novelty and nutrition, just like your body, right? You want to build a, a physical muscle, you give it what? You work it out, you give it exercise, you give it stimulus, novelty, and then you feed that muscle with nutrition. Same thing with your mental muscles. If you, you, no matter how successful you are in this world, if you have never had even a glimpse of self-transcendence, then your life is pretty purposeless and, and it's very unlikely that you will be a, a happy human being. The greatest people in history and reading their lives and finding out, guess what? Their lives were far from perfect. Some of them had worse lives than I had. But when you have no reference and all you do is go online, you talk to other people, it's making everybody else toxic and I'm like this and they didn't do that. Then you get to have this shitty life just like those other people. Why are they online so much? Because they don't have a life, right? Don't be one of those. Free yourself from the chains of your past. Generally, when I try to assess something like that, there's a rule if you're a social scientist, and the first rule is, in some sense, to look at context before you look at personality. And I think there's been a lot of really radical changes in our society in the last 50 years, and we don't understand their consequences. Right. So passion is incredibly important because underneath it is actually love. And people don't talk about love, but if you don't love what you do, if you don't love your vision, if you don't love your craft, you're not gonna run through walls to be BIW. Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Beckham, Buffett, Jobs, Mother Teresa, the, the baker or the barista <laughs> with the sparkle in their eyes at your favorite coffee shop when everyone else is complaining who still even though their heart might be breaking, looks at you and smiles and thanks you and brings their A-game, is showing love. Information combined with emotion becomes a long-term memory, right? The state that you learn something in, the mood and the feelings that you learn something in, gets attached to what you want to learn. Also, it's going to motivate you to use it more often. Everybody wants to win, but in order to know how to win, you got to know how to lose because you're going to lose more than you're going to win. But every time you lose, what do you gain from it? So every time I've lost, people say, you got to jump right back up, you know, get back right on your feet again. And I, I disagree with that. After you lose or when you get knocked down, stay down there for a minute. Understand why you lost. What were the reasons? Why are you down here? Why did you lose? Why did you get knocked down? Because if you just jump right back up, you're going to lose again and again, and you continue going to lose the same way. So every time I lost, I stayed down for a second, minutes, hours, days, weeks. But when I stood up, I was different. I was smarter. And when I lost again, I stayed down. I stood back up, was stronger. When I lost again, I stayed down. There's four kinds of people in the world. Employees, self-employed or small business guys, big business or brands. And I is not a 401k guy. I is an insider. Thank you.
Mm. So I'm always in, you know, that what they say this <clears throat> insiders are, is illegal. That's that's not true. Mm. Insider trading is done all day long. Yeah. I I don't have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or a 401k. I only invest from the inside. Mm -hmm. People differ in extroversion, and that's positive emotion. They differ in neuroticism, and that's negative emotion. Some people are much more sensitive to depression and grief and anxiety. Their threshold for threat is a lot lower. Some people are agreeable rather than disagreeable, and agreeable people are very empathic and self-sacrificing. And the empathic part is good because, you know, it's useful to be empathic, especially if you're caring for people who are in real trouble. But the self-sacrificing isn't so good. That can make you resentful and, and also um, decrease the probability that you're going to be successful in your salary negotiations and so forth. So Acumen and talent without passion is a hollow victory. You've got to have passion. Let's go to the science, emotional contagion. You know, social scientists are realizing that we feel like the people who do populate our life most often. You know, husbands and wives were studies, if, if the wife or husband was depressed if, over time, the husband or wife, the other partner became depressed. So if you're around energy vampires and people who are depressed and miserable, you will pick up their emotions and that will be your emotional default over time. That's pretty powerful. When someone hurts me, I'm supposed to forgive them. Why would I forgive them? Why would I even pray for them? Because I know heaven is real, thus hell is real, and I don't even want my worst enemy to go to hell. Do you understand? When I have an enemy, I pray for them that God would actually also open up their eyes. I don't need to be their friend. I don't even need to talk to them ever again, but to pray that God would heal them of their evil against me. And they realize that what they're looking for is the Savior who's knocking on the door of their heart. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, what can I make? It's 100% generative as much as I can be. But in the context of being of, of creation, you hit problems. You hit issues that need like, you know, like to sort of like, okay, let me go into the figure it out mindset. I'm not actually in the process of being super generative at that point, but I'm figuring yeah. out things that need to be figured out. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm back into generation. There's one other piece of it, um, which we added in actually, there, there's been an evolution of the work that I call the anti sparkotype and that is the work that most people experience as the most emptying, the heaviest lift, and requiring the most recovery from. It is our task to, as much as possible, incorporate that deeper level of consciousness into our daily life. Even if we don't succeed all the time, uh, that's fine, that's part of the practice. So one could say then, our purpose in our daily life beyond the personal purpose, which is also important because we need to honor who we are as a person too. And we need to honor our identity as a person because no doubtedly that exists. The authentic self is never lost. In fact, there's a very interesting word that we use when it comes to illness or addiction. What's the word that we use when people get better? They recover. What does it mean to recover? It means to find something. Well, if you find it, it means it could never have been lost in the first place. So I think that healing is always, well, I don't say always. I mean, at a certain point, people are diagnosed at terminal stages where nothing they're going to do is going to relieve them of the burden of illness. But often, 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 becoming conscious, becoming, having some agency in your life can make a huge difference. The human is a conditioned self. It's a personality, your historical person, which comes from the past, based on past, who you are as a person that includes your physical body and your psychological self. I call that sometimes your form identity. There's a physical form and there's a psychological form of you. That's the human. And then there's the being. The being is the deeper self that is consciousness, unconditioned. Subscribe now.